FOD means foreign object damage. It affects everybody. Delays and canceled flights are costly. For aft-mounted engines, small stones are the single largest cause of economic loss due to FOD. However, birds and ice are very serious because they often involve flight safety and can affect pilot workload during the most critical phase of flight. Takeoff. Still, FOD is largely preventable. The following will show its sources and how you can help prevent it. Sure resistance to FOD, the engines are proven durable. They have been certified by ice, hail, and bird ingestion tests. An ice slab was dropped into the inlet. The engine experienced negligible loss in power and sustained minimal damage to the fan rotor. To simulate hailstone ingestion, 13 1 inch and 13 2 inch ice balls were loaded into two pneumatic cannons and laser aimed at specific target areas on the engine fan. Mitchell Camp. Arm assist. Fire. The ice balls were fired at a speed of 250 knots. The engine was operating at maximum cruise power. Again, the engine experienced minimal power loss with minor damage to the fan rotor. To demonstrate engine integrity after multiple bird strikes, four medium-sized birds weighing one and a half pounds each were fired into the engine at a speed of 250 knots. The engine was operating at full takeoff power. impact, the engine surged, recovered immediately, and continued to operate satisfactorily. Cold weather and ice can present hazardous conditions. Use proper aircraft operating practices, de-icing and runway cleaning procedures. The performance of ground crews, pilots, and airport managers is critical. Let's start with the pilots. Pilots need to follow procedures without exception. Regulations prohibit takeoff when frost, snow, or ice is adhering to the wings or control surfaces of the aircraft. So make certain the aircraft is properly de-iced. Turn on engine and airfoil anti-ice when icing conditions exist or are expected. In short, follow proper operating procedures. Ice ingestion caused by ice shedding from the airplane may go undetected by the pilot even if more than one engine is affected. Therefore, inspection of fan blade tips may reveal damage even when there is no pilot report. Repeated engine surge introduces considerable stress to engine components. When surge or power loss is reported by the pilot, inspect the compressor section carefully. It may have internal damage. This is the type of damage you might find.
or the damage could be worse. Ice forming on the fuselage or wings can represent a threat greater than that certified as safe by engine testing. Results are definitely not routine as far as the pilot is concerned. A massive ice ingestion event is often preceded by the observation of minor aircraft damage caused by water leakage, which freezes and dislodges in flight. Dents like this in leading edge surfaces indicate the need for maintenance action to check the aircraft for water leakage. Waste disposal servicing is an important operation. Inspect for signs of leakage before starting. Follow manufacturer's procedures carefully. And be sure that the area is wiped down very clean when finished. This permits detection of any leakage that might occur before the next servicing. must be taken seriously. They can be a hazard to flight safety because they can affect all engines of an aircraft at the same time. Although birds try to avoid collision, all too often they cannot get out of the way in time. A comprehensive airport bird control program is a must. There are two basic techniques. Bioacoustics, which is the use of bird distress calls. And pyrotechnics, the use of noise-making devices. These two techniques work best used together. When using bioacoustics, be sure to identify the species of bird at your airport so that the right distress call can be used. The wrong one would be ineffective. When using pyrotechnics, be sure to move the noise-making device from time to time so the birds don't get habituated to the sound. Although the birds may leave for a time, they often return in a few days or weeks. An effective bird control program requires persistence. For aft-mounted engines, the most common source of FOD is loose material on the runway blown forward of the engine inlet by thrust reverser action. Here is an illustration of what happens during reverse thrust. In the top drawing, at idle reverse at 60 knots and 1.2 at 80, the reverse efflux remains at the rear of the engine. At 1.2 at 60 knots and 1.6 at 80, the reverse efflux is advancing, but is still not forward of the inlet. But such ranges as 1.4 at 60 knots and 1.2 at 40 provide an atmosphere for FOD damage. As the bottom illustration shows, no FOD problem exists during power back. With no relative wind, all debris is blown along the ground, and thus is never lifted to a position where it could be drawn into the engine. Engine suction by itself is not a big factor in FOD. Material must be lofted up in front of the engine before being ingested. In tests at higher engine power, 
and relatively low aircraft speed. Slow motion documentation clearly shows reversers can lift material to forward of the engines. Therefore, published procedures regarding use of reverse power must be strictly followed. Unless higher thrust is required for existing conditions. Most FOD is preventable. Snow and ice can be a problem. Remove it from the runway and from the aircraft. Wastewater servicing is an important job. Procedures must be followed carefully. Bird control. A comprehensive program must be pursued. And thrust reversers. Follow manufacturer's guidelines. A small failure to work hard at FOD prevention can have serious consequences. FOD is everybody's problem. <laughs>